Hello again from Bryson City. Uh, today I'm doing a art lesson on model railroading. How is that art, you might ask? Um, a model railroading combines a couple different skills. Um, scratch building, which is uh, essentially combining little parts. You kind of have to plan stuff out. You have to kind of be able to draw it and sketch it to begin with. Um, it's also a form of sculpture. I'm sure some of you guys talent and that all relates to model railroading you can do um, doesn't have to be realistic it could be fantasy and you could make your own stuff uh, model railroading relies on a lot of different um, sculpture techniques including uh, resin casting plaster casting um, outright sculpting with your hands using a variety of tools 3d printing the sky's the limit um, yeah, and I'm sure there's other hobbies out there too. You know, airplanes, RC cars. Um, the list goes on and on that uh, rely on some of the same information. But my big thing is trains. I think a lot of people. Art lesson. Because I want to kind of advocate to get more people into model railroading. So. Um, I've got a few things laid out here. I'm going to show you guys um, some of my trains, uh, project layout that I'm working on right now, and um, talk about, um, if you're interested, how to get started in model railroading. So um, before I get started uh, with the things I have laid out, um, in model railroading, there are many scales. Um, the three most popular ones are, number one, is O scale, which is 1 to 48, which includes a lot of range. The most popular scale is HO scale, 1 to 87th. HO actually means half O, but somewhere, I guess somebody didn't do their math correctly because 87 is not um, double, so it's not half the size of. 48 so <laughs> I didn't make this up but uh, so you have um, O H O and then you have the scale that I do which is in scale 1 to 1 60th um, those are probably the three po most popular scales there's also Z scale which is smaller that's There's also this page, which is, I think it's 1 to 220th or 1 to 300. Um, there's also S scale in between HO and O. And um, larger than O, there is G scale. G scale is commonly used as garden railroad. So it, the size difference, for example, this is an N scale car. This is a 50 foot car. If it was an HO scale, it would be a little, almost double the size of it, height and length. So, but um, let me get switched around here. All right, table full of goodies. So they have all sorts of different kits and things that you can buy. Um, Ready-made stuff. This is older. I got this from uh, from a friend. Um, but you can find, still find, and I think the packaging is still the same, just not as dusty. See, this was $4 back in the day. So this is ancient because um, that's not $4 now. But um, So here's a passenger station. Lumber, lumber mill, sawmill. Um, this is an older kit, too. This is from Model Power, so you can get kits to put together. Um, or if you want to, you can scratch build your own buildings using sheet styrene. The sheet styrene usually comes in packets, packets like this from Evergreen. So you can get your sheet styrene, and like this is heavy duty, but it's textured. Just 
a little building that was com a combination of two buildings and the, the garage door was cut out and so these two buildings were just smushed together you can see on the inside I've braced them but um, and it's missing one of its exhaust vents somewhere somewhere in the in the pile but so you can have a um, so this is auto unitrack which is very user friendly very easy to install and put together all the mechanisms are hidden underneath here so it's sealed up um, you want to take it apart it just comes right apart snaps right together um, some folks say they don't like this because it, um, it, um, the top spacing doesn't look, um, Kado is a Japanese company, so, um, this is based off of Japanese spacing. Then there's Atlas. I've got, um, this is Atlas Snap Track. Atlas does make a couple other products besides this. They also make very realistic um, track that's code 55. But again, this stuff is pretty simple. It goes together fairly easily. Um, you have rail joiners. You should have two. I think I've, oh, I got another one right here. So in order to put this together, you slide these little rail joiners on the end of And then just like there. So you can put your track together. And you can make any configuration. You can do circles. You can do uh, figure eights. Um, if you want to do to where it loops around onto itself, you'd have to have a little bit different technology and wiring. But otherwise, if you do a point to point or a continuous loop, um, you can just hook it all up. And of course, there's um, the, the best part about it is there's the trains. So there's different, like this car that I showed you guys, this is a refrigerated car. Um, you know, they come in all shapes and sizes from... Uh, this from and around this, it's got some detail parts here, and it's got out the end for the uh, mechanical, the little refrigeration unit. This would be a reefer, a refrigerated car for um, transporting vegetables, frozen food, stuff like that. Um, this is actually from uh, what me and Betsy like to run and call the ice cream train. So, um, covered hoppers, a lot of different brands of cars and stuff out there. And most of these manufacturers make cars in HO and N scale. O scale, you start getting a little bit limited quantity, but it's, a, again, it's a, still a good group of manufacturers. So, Walther's, they make a, most of the models they make in N scale. They also make in HO scale. That's another another good company. I also like to add some cars in the other line. Uh, this is from, if I remember right. It should be their. No, this one doesn't say. It's their um, master line, but they have a train man line, which is good, if I remember right, for eight or nine plus. So here's another Atlas Master Car, tank car. And just so you can see the level of detail on these. So it's got all the wiring and lines, all the uh, gearing and stuff at the end, the brake wheel, the very nice handrails and stuff. Um, so when you get into the realm of all the other stuff you can do, there's also all sorts of little cars and kits and... So stuff that measures out, like I found these school buses, these are actually motorized, so if you pull back on the wheels, they'll take off. But um, not the best detail, but again, it's about the right size. A little dull coat, and it'd be just fine. Here's another cast metal model that um, I've added some, some details to. So here's this one. Um, this one, I'm sure you've seen these before in the store. They move and carry on. So, um, 3D printed. Anybody need a park bench? Also, 3D printed, John. 
This is cast with a uh, decal machine, another dumpster, and this is also cast. So all these things are readily available. Nice fire truck. Looks like the ones in Silva. Um, you can pick these up. A lot of times you have to kind of figure out for yourself. So here's a roll-off dumpster that was cast with a little truck that was already pre-assembled. The wheels do roll. So I have mounted one on the back. And this one I put some cardboard boxes in. That's just uh, brown construction paper folded up. So you can go to any level of detail and... Yeah, whether it be it or be still you can make, you can go any number level. Um, I recommend for beginners getting a Kado Unitrack set. They make a basic set, which is nice, and you can also get it with a power pack. If it doesn't have a power pack or a transformer, um, you can pick one up. This is a nicer one. They have um, Bachman, I think it's Bachman Tyco. There's um, several different companies that make them that make ones that are more simple than this but I really like these uh, from a, uh, model electronics but this is a pretty good one it's heavy duty this will run uh, in scale and HO when you get into O scale you'll need a different power pack because it, it takes more electricity so now This is my um, Smoky Mountain logging layout. It's kind of loosely based off of um, the logging railroads that were prevalent here in the mountains um, for a number of years. So, just to give you, I'm going to zoom this back. So, here's the power pack. I've already got it turned on. I have the direction in the right way. So here's the train. This is an Atlas Shea. This is a gift from a friend of mine. Um, wonderful little model. The sides of it and everything work here. So let me see if I can. And then I'm going to turn it on. There it goes. It's a very relaxing hobby once you get it all set up. Sometimes it can be frustrating, just like with anything. It can be frustrating. You're trying to put little parts and pieces together. Depending on um, your eyesight, most folks I recommend HO. You can see in O scale, you can see what you're doing. You can see it up close. You get that impression that you're right on the train. But with in scale, you can run a longer train, and it feels like you're, you know, up on that hill watching the train come through the valley. I'm going to take it out of the tripod here. I want to get down closer and show you guys some of the details. So we've got these trees. These are, you can buy these as a kit. I've painted them up and made them look uh, a little bit on the frosty side. When this is all done, here's a sawmill and a lumber stacked up. I have some gondolas over here on the siding. So I'm working on creating a little sawmill here. This is actually I've gone uh, popping up. So as you can see, there's 
lumber stacked up outside here. There's lumber stacked up inside here. The whole idea is that uh, you make these seams. Big pictures, kind of like you're, kind of like you're there, and like you're viewing this. There we go. It's probably too fast for a shay. <laughs> Some other things that are in. It is just between two and a half. And over here, you can see the red clay right here. And red clay over here. This is local red clay. I want to make sure it was um, um, pretty accurate. So, anyway, this took a little bit of time. And, um, but it was enjoyable. So, um, let me see here. You can also take this off and I'll show you quick. There's building stuff. Open the lumber out. There's the lumber inside stacked up. Gotta work on the roof a little bit. Gotta put shingles on the roof and it'll be done. But so this is a little bit more advanced, but again, back to what we were talking about with the snap track. This would be a great way to start. A power pack. And then you could just grab a locomotive. Doesn't necessarily have to be the Shea. It could be something a little bit more basic. Let me grab one here for you. Ooh. I have, this is a Atlas Classic line. Um, this is a GP35, which um, Great Smoky Mountain Railroad had a couple of these back uh, a few years back. I think it was the numbers 210 and 211, and they actually did come from Norfolk and Western. So, so here's this. This is a pretty standard locomotive. So I'll have to change out these couplers and stuff for mine. But starting off, you can use the these kind of Rapido couplers. And again, you can just put this straight on the track and with the power pack, and away you go. Nice thing about the Unitrack is you can um, make a loop on your kitchen table, and when you're done, you can put it away. You don't need to. Um, you don't need to leave it out. But um, I think it's fun to make little little layouts like this, and then this can live. So somewhere like the room, or office, or something. So I can never work. Uh, which is fun. this is a good uh, good information for those who who have um, office jobs. If you take a five minute break and do something creative or uh, something that can constitutes play. They say that it'll make you 35% um, more more productive. So something to think about. Have a train in your office. You be really stress free. You have to be work on the balance though. That way you're not um, overly distracted with the train. So anyway. It's here in my studio, and I'm going to be working on that, and I'll probably be posting some videos about that. So you'll see the model railroading uh, come through the art lessons again a couple more times um, as I work on Joe Frank's old old train box here and uh, get it all set up. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed model railroading, and we'll see you next time.